Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about properties of matter. This is our first real big topic in chemistry. So it's going to be a lot of stuff like this throughout the year. Um, so the main reason why is chemistry is the branch of science that studies matter and the changes that it undergoes. So chemistry is divided into a lot of different uh, sub-branches like organic chemistry, contains carbon, um, all these molecules that you see in the picture are part of organic chemistry. It's like one of the hardest classes that you can take in college. Um, that's like biomolecules and stuff. It's really cool if you can understand it, but it's like super complicated. Inorganic chemistry is what we're going to be mainly focusing on, which is non-carbon containing compounds. They're usually a lot simpler, so they're easier to study um, on a basic level. Then we have analytical chemistry, which is used to basically number crunch. So it is basically where scientists gather a bunch of data and then they do like computer tests to simulate models and stuff where they use it to predict things that are going to happen chemically. Physical chemistry, um, biochemistry, nuclear chemistry, they all have their own special things that go on. We'll talk a little bit about each type throughout the year, uh, but mostly we're going to focus on the inorganic part of chemistry. So who actually uses chemistry? Okay, so you're probably wondering why on earth am I in this class? I am not going to college to be a chemistry major. I don't plan on spending my life in a lab, so forth. Well, obviously science teachers use it, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Um, medical staff, like if you're a doctor, a nurse, even if you're an EMT paramedic, uh, they all use chemistry to help uh, dose patients so that they get the right medicines they need. The perfume industry, um, they have to figure out how to mix the different aromatics, aromatics being chemical compounds that um, smell good. Dietitians, people that tell you what to eat and in what proportions. They have to know the body chemistry. Athletes use chemistry. Um, Gatorade was actually developed by a physician who worked at, I believe, Florida um, University. Uh, that's where it got the name Gatorade. Their mascot is the Gator. Um, but anyway, so they use it to make sure that the pH levels in the blood are right, make sure that their electrolytes don't de get depleted whenever they sweat, things like that. Painters and construction workers have to make sure that the paint or cement or other materials that they're using are mixed properly. Um, if you have a glue to put tiles down or something and the glue is not mixed right, your tiles are not going to stay very well. Mechanics. Um, if you have ever worked on vehicles before, you probably know that there are a lot of different fluids that go into cars. There, um, there's brake fluid, windshield washer fluid, um, engine oil, things like that. Um, they can be very dangerous if you mix them together, or even worse, if you put the wrong fluid into the wrong chamber of the car. You can do some serious engine damage that way. Research scientists, pharmacists, again, have to dose the patients. They have to know how to mix up the drugs properly. Um, so most of the times, the prescriptions that you get at the pharmacy are pre-mixed by larger companies, but there are still some medicines that pharmacists have to hand mix in the pharmacy, and they have to know a lot of chemistry. My mom was a pharmacist uh, before she became a teacher, like me, and... Um, I believe she actually had a chemistry degree. Farmers and ranchers have to use chemistry to make sure that the pH in the soil is good enough to grow the crops. Otherwise, crops won't grow um, or they'll be stunted. Uh, basically, it just messes everything up. Uh, gardeners have to use chemistry. If you've ever grown a hydrangea, you can actually tell what color it is or what the pH is based on the color. Uh, cosmetologists or beauticians have to know how to mix up hair dye 
when they're dyeing your hair. Um, nowadays, everybody's got to know how to use chemistry in order to stay safe with COVID. So just about any profession is going to have to use chemistry at some point. Even if you are working at McDonald's, you got to know how to mix that bleach and that water together to mop the floor at the end of the shift so that the floor gets cleaned or whatever chemical you're, it is you're using. Um, just a few months ago, they had a story where there were some restaurant workers and they had actually mixed the wrong cleaning chemicals together in the kitchen area and it actually killed some of them because they didn't mix them properly or they had them stored improperly too close together. So everybody needs to know a little bit about chemistry, even if that's not the branch you're going into after you get out of high school. Okay, great. So lots of chemical jargon, lots of talk about just random stuff. So what exactly is matter? What is this thing we're studying in chemistry? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. You've known this definition for a long time. Okay, there's a chemistry joke. Uh, you matter. You have mass. You take up space. In other words, you have weight. You take up space. You matter. Um, matter includes plants, animals, bacteria, viruses, furniture, planets, stars, liquids, gas, and pretty much everything has matter. Matter does not include time, distance, the vacuum of space, heat or light, or radio waves, or any other type of radiation. Uh, those things do not require particles. They do not take up space. Um, they're kind of intangible things that we can measure, but we can't like actually pick it up in our hands. Okay. So matter has to have mass, like atoms, and it has to take up some volume of space. So let's look at some properties of matter that we can observe. So before I talk about it, I want you to pause the video. I want you to think, what are some physical and chemical properties of matter? What are some examples of each? Okay, so what is the definition of a physical property? What is the definition of a chemical property? What are some examples? All right, so take a few minutes and think about that and then press play. All right, so let's look at the difference between physical properties and chemical properties. Physical properties are a property of matter that can be observed without changing the makeup of the substance. In other words, I can see, smell, taste, touch it, or hear it without having to change what it is. So I can see that my laptop is a silvery gray color. It's still a laptop. I can hear the air conditioner running. It's still an air conditioner. Okay, I can taste my Diet Dr. Pepper is still a Diet Dr. Pepper. Okay, so physical properties include things like density, color, odor, hardness, like how hard a substance is, um, the melting and boiling point, shape, and state of matter, like if it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. And the reason why state of matter is included is because um, if you think of an ice cube, uh, it's all just water. When it's a solid form, it's an ice cube. If it melts, it's a uh, liquid, but it's still water. If you boil it, it becomes steam. It's still water. Okay. It's still the same H2O particles. So that doesn't change what the actual particle is. It's just the same stuff over and over again. On the flip side, a chemical property is a property of matter that can only be observed when an object changes its chemical makeup or you try to change its chemical makeup. Like rusting or oxidizing, um, 
flammability or how easily it catches on fire. Reactivity, if it mixes with another chemical and it causes a reaction. Those are chemical properties because I actually have to mix it with something else and try to change it. Even if it doesn't succeed, I'm at least trying to change its chemical makeup. So density is a physical property. I don't have to change what it is in order to measure it. So density is where you have two objects that are about the same size, but one's heavier than the other because it's got more particles packed in there. Um, think of it like you have a classroom. A low density classroom would be if you only had five people sitting in there. A high density classroom would be if you had 30 people sitting in there. Big difference on crowding. The particles are the same way. Color is a physical property. I can look at these different bell peppers and I can see their color without having to change what they are. I can see there are some orange bell peppers, some green ones, some red ones. I can see the color of the sticker on the bell peppers. And I don't have to change anything about the bell pepper. It's still just a pepper. What about the ability to rust? So the ability to rust is a chemical property because I have to uh, actually change what the particle is in order to be able to see if it's going to rust or not. So this is the Titanic. Now the Titanic sank in 1912, April 1912, and um, at the time it was made out of steel. Well, steel is basically iron. When iron is exposed to water for a long time and oxygen, it starts to rust. So all those little brown things that you see on the ship are called rusticles. Um, they were actually named when they found the Titanic because they reminded them of little icicles. But anyway, um, it's not iron anymore. It's now iron oxide. So that iron in the steel has undergone a chemical change from exposure to the oxygen in the water and it has actually turned into iron oxide. It's no longer the same thing that it once was. You can't go back. What about odor or smell? Does she have to change that grapefruit or orange in order to be able to smell it? No. It's just a physical property. You don't have to change anything about it in order to be able to smell it. The Mohs hardness scale uh, describes the hardness of an object. This is also a physical property. So I can uh, test how hard a copper penny is. It's still a copper penny. I can see that a diamond is much, much harder than quartz. That doesn't change the fact that they're diamond and quartz. Okay, so if you can observe it without having to change what it is, it's a physical property. If you actually have to change what it is or try to change what it is in order to test it, then it's a chemical property. Flammability, same thing. Um, you actually have to try to burn it, which changes the properties of it. So that is a chemical property. So overall, questions to ask when determining physical and chemical properties. Do I have to change the substance in order to observe it? In other words, do I have to change it from what it uh, chemically is? If yeah, then it's a chemical property. If, it, if no, you don't have to, then it's a physical property. Now let's look at intensive and extensive properties. So these are like subdivisions of physical properties. Okay, so this is, these are like two different branches of physical properties. Okay, extensive properties depend on the amount of substance, like mass, weight, volume, length. Um, extensive properties can change. So if I cut something in half, it might still be the same chemical makeup, but I only have half of it now. Intensive properties do not depend on the amount of substance. Density, color, odor, and other things being examples. In other words, I can cut up an orange into different slices. It's still got the same pH. It's still got the same chemical properties and other physical properties. 
such as the color of the orange, the smell of the orange, um, the density of the orange, and they're all the same. So intensive relates to quality, extensive relates to quantity. So quality or intensive describes like color, odor, shape, some other physical characteristic that doesn't depend on the amount. Um, I have put some more examples down here. You need to know these like very well, um, but some of them include color, luster, or shininess, taste, melting point, boiling point, density, hardness, odor, or smell, how well it conducts electricity, uh, malleability, or how easily it is to be hammered down, ductility, how easy it is to be drawn into a wire, magnetism, temperature, things like that. They don't depend on how much you have. Extensive relates to quantity or amount. Quantitative data is numerical information describing the amount, how much, how big, how tall, how fast, how far, like size, volume, length, and mass. So now there's going to be an assignment on Google Classroom about properties of matter. So you're going to go over some of these physical and chemical and intensive and extensive properties and you are going to determine what these properties are, what categories they fall into, and maybe even classify different types of matter based on their properties.